I've loved the Raspberry Pi for a long time, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest one to come out, the Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte RAM variant. This just released, and it is probably the most expensive Raspberry Pi that has released. And I know I've said this a couple times recently, that I think it's unfortunate that the Raspberry Pi is no longer the cheap $35 single board computer option for you know, retro gaming, emulation, and, you know, other kinds of projects like that. And I think after I've thought about that, it's kind of a misleading statement. It, it, it makes sense in a way, but in, in reality, it doesn't. I, I more mean it in that ever since the Raspberry Pi 2, which is where I started at, it, that was $35, but the Pi 3 was $35 as well. But then moving into the Pi 4, you know, prices started going up and then the Pi 5, the same thing. But every board wound up getting more powerful but the prices started going up. So it's like, yeah, each iteration, the price went up a little bit. And now, you know, we're up to this thing that's 120 bucks. Yeah, there's a lot of other options out there, but we can still get a Raspberry Pi for $35. I just wanted to point this out real quick before we jump into this thing. But um, all these Raspberry Pis that I have printed on here, are still manufactured. So the Pi 2B, which like I said, is what I started with, uh, released, that's the first Pi that I ever messed around with, with emulation and whatnot, came out in February, 2015. They don't plan to discontinue it till January, 2026, but this one I can't really find being sold anywhere. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, maybe a little earlier it's not being manufactured, I don't know. But that's what I find the information out there. The Pi 3B, came out in February 2016, uh, and I could still find that one at all the places that uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation listed at uh, for that price. The one gig uh, RAM for 35 bucks, they're gonna stop manufacturing that 2028. The 3B Plus, uh, 35 bucks, they began that in March 2018, they're gonna end that in 2030. The Pi 4, all the different, you know, they made tons of variants with the uh, gigabytes, one, two, four, eight, you know, prices all kind of fluctuated. The one gigabyte you can get for 35 bucks. I mean, that stays in line with uh, all the previous models, but that, that one wasn't out um, before all these. I think that came out later, but it uh, came out June, 2019. They're gonna end production 2034. And then, uh, which I, I really love these, the Pi 400 kit, that it's the keyboard, the kit, like I'm listing it as the kit, but you could buy it, not the kit, but. I mean, the kit comes with uh, like the power supply uh, mouse and whatnot. It's a hundred bucks for the four gig model that came out in November, 2020. They're ending that 2026. And then the Pi 5 came out October, 2023. And they're ending that in 2036. And there's all the different prices. It starts at 50 bucks all the way up to $120. Now, and the Pi 500 kit just recently released uh, December, 2024. And that's gonna end in 2034. 8 gig version, 120 bucks. It comes with the mouse and the uh, power supply. They do sell both the Pi 400 and the 500 non kit, or it's just the keyboard with the, you know, the board and everything in it, and it's cheaper. But I, I don't know. I'm gonna mess around with the Pi 500 kit at some point. But I just want to point that out. All these options are still available, so you can still get a Pi for 35 dollars. Just you know, you're kind of scaling back on the power type of thing, but. I wanted to mess with this, uh, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, are we really gonna be able to utilize that? So, um, like, I guess it's just gonna depend on the, uh, you know, applications, like are, are things gonna need the RAM? With emulation, I mean, the eight gigs, even four gigs, I think with the Pi 5 may mostly be fine with stuff. I'm gonna see with, uh, because I also have the M2 hat. Uh, this has been out for a little while, but they just recently released them with their uh, Pi, Raspberry Pi branded SSDs, but I'm actually not going to use that. I'm gonna use this team group one, this one terabyte. So I don't think Raspberry Pi makes a one terabyte. I think they only do a 256 and a 512. This board, the M2 hat's like 10 or $12, but if you get it with their SSD, it's like 50 bucks or so, something like that. Uh, but the, I'm gonna use this instead because I have like a, one terabyte build that I want to put on there, Batacera build. So I'm going to take that out and use that instead. I'll put, I'll probably build my uh, own setup on this at some point. 
get that out, swap this in. And I'm gonna try to put this all in the uh, official case. I'm not sure if this fits in there. Kind of curious with that. Because I, I had some of this stuff I was using on um, my eight gig model and I never put it in a case. Uh, so I'm gonna try that way. And then I do have the active cooler, which will pop on. Fan goes, uh, plugs in here, but they have a, when you get a new Pi 5, they have like this little cap on there covering it, covering the uh, slot for it. And this, uh, well, I already have the, uh, the pads on here that the active cooler comes with. This goes here. I'm going to push it into those holes. Spring loaded action. There we go. Got it. Now, I know for sure the M2 hat fits on there with that just fine. It looks looking like the ultimate Pi 5 setup here. Uh, I'm assuming, because normally you would just screw it in from below. But I noticed on this case, there are holes down there. And I've never like screwed anything in there, but I think it lines up with that. But I'm pretty sure I have to take this fan off. Oh, I did forget. We do have to get this in there. I, I forgot a step, dude. We have to get the GPIO extender plugged in. Dang it. All right, I'm going to take this out and do that. It's always something. I'm going to try to carefully line these up. Hopefully this all fits in here. Okay, I mean, it's in there, but now, now moment of truth, if this top half goes on there, I'm pretty damn sure that this is, like, nothing else is going to be able to go back on there, though. Is this going to pinch? Oh, it fits, I think. I mean, it's in the case. We just, the top part's bare. Hopefully, uh, nothing is pinched or whatever. Seems like everything's lined up fine. Now, now just to, to power it on, make sure it actually works. So I got this thing powered on and booted up and it's running just fine. I was a little worried that like the M2 hat cable was going to get pinched and maybe something wasn't going to work right in this case. But I guess maybe they kept everything in mind with this design. Everything fits in there okay and it booted up fine. So that's cool. Uh, I do have that Batacera one terabyte build from Woofinos loaded up on that uh, SSD there. So... We got it booted up. Check it out real quick. Uh, in Batacera, if you go into the system settings, uh, let me find it real quick. It should show you, uh, I believe right here in information, uh, your RAM. So I just want to double check that it actually is recognizing it. And it is. So yeah, it does recognize we have 16 gigs of RAM. Sweet. Now, with uh, emulation on the Pi 5, I know, you know we can do up to like GameCube. I know the uh, PS3 uh, emulator guys have got it running on the Pi 5, but it seems very limited and whatnot. I'm going to mess with that at some point, but you know, as far as what all you can do with the 16 gig Pi 5, I mean, they say it's for power users and whatever else. It's just going to depend on the applications you're using. I'm really not sure with emulation if this is really going to push any boundaries or not. But uh, let's at least load it, load up a game. Simpsons Road Rage is a, a fun one. Steal any of my passengers and you'll pay for it, my friend. You'll pay dearly. USA! Okay. USA! <laughs> this one's just like a, like Crazy Taxi. The, the other one, the other Simpsons game is like Grand Theft Auto. It's pretty cool. But damn, this is a, this is running pretty damn smooth. But I mean, oh shit. Th that's the thing, like, you know, for the Pi 5, I, I love I love these uh, single board computers, and I, I love the Raspberry Pi, but um, 
Yeah, at the, the price point of $120 plus the storage you need, buying a case, power supply. Uh, yeah, it's it's a fairly expensive endeavor. Most expensive Raspberry Pi setup I've ever uh, messed with. So is it worth it for me to fool around with? Yes, I think so. But for an everyday person wanting to jump into some emulation, probably not. Uh oh. But I, I always enjoyed the the cheaper Raspberry Pis, thirty five dollar Pis, setting up some more uh, lower end emulation, you know, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, stuff that you could do on uh, a lot of devices. But just having like a small little plug and play emulation console is always cool. Or setting these types of things up in uh, like a bar top or an arcade machine is always pretty sweet. And the, the, the cheaper Raspberry Pis always played PlayStation 1 perfectly well. So that was something that was always cool. And this is, you know, far more capable. So you're playing Dreamcast, GameCube, Atari Jaguar. Oh, crap. Quite a few things. But yeah, this is surprising how well this plays. Oh, did he just say, ow, my ass? <laughs> but uh, there you go. I just wanted to I just wanted to get this set up and just kind of take a look at this new variant, Raspberry Pi, the 16 gig version. Definitely, uh, as far as emulation goes, going to require you know, more fiddling around with, seeing if uh, this is actually going to benefit anything. Really, it's just going to depend on the, the system and if the RAM is even necessary. You know, you know what I mean? A lot of things is not going to be necessary. So, yeah, I'm just going to have to wait and see uh, how beneficial it's actually going to be. But there you go. Really do appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.